This Week at NASA. Well, Sasha is opening the hatch. Yes, at Caritio. Okay, open. Soyuz Commander Fyodor Yuchikin and NASA flight engineers Doug Wheelock and Shannon Walker got a warm welcome from the resident Expedition 24 crew after arriving at the International Space Station. Yurchikin, Wheelock, and Walker will spend six months on the station, joining Alexander Svortsov, Mikhail Konienko, and Tracy Caldwell Dyson, who've been there since April. There it goes. We're standing by for main engine start. We've got main engine start. Five, four, three, two, one, and ignition. Yuchikin, Wheelock, and Walker arrived at the ISS after a two-day journey that began with the liftoff of their Russian Soyuz TMA-19 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. A perfect ascent to orbit for the newest uh, trio of residents headed for the International Space Station. The six Expedition 24 crew members will now concentrate on more than 130 science experiments being conducted aboard the complex. This discovery is just astounding. After continually monitoring the brightness of more than 156,000 stars, NASA's Kepler team has released the first 43 days of science data. This is the biggest release of candidate planets that has ever happened. It is the number of candidate planets is actually greater than all the planets that have been discovered in the last 15 years. Three. Two. Engine start, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler. Since its launch on March 6, 2009, Kepler has been on the hunt to find planets similar in size to our Earth, especially those in the habitable zone of stars, where liquid water and possibly life might exist. A planet candidate is, is a, some astrophysical signal that we have picked up that looks like it's coming from a planet orbiting another star. Now, some of those are actual planets, some of them are false positives. So we have a ground-based program with a dozen different telescopes that stretch from the Canary Islands to Hawaii where we check to see which of those signals is really a planet and which one isn't. Findings from those follow-up observations will be released in February of next year. A team of astronomers and scientists from NASA, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, and other organizations had front row seats as the Hayabusa spacecraft made a fiery return to Earth's atmosphere. Nice flashes. Oh, wow. This is Down lower right, lower right. Re-entry vehicle looks like lower right. Special cameras and other imaging instruments aboard NASA's DC-8 Airborne Laboratory captured the spacecraft's high-speed re-entry over an unpopulated area of central Australia. Hayabusa completed a seven-year journey to return a sample of the asteroid Itokawa. Scientists aren't sure a sample was obtained. If they do find one, it'll weigh no more than a gram. 1901 has command on the scene here. Hey, we're going to be needing the uh, CERT hazmat team. The Glenn Research Center held a mailroom May Day. The drill was a test of cutting-edge robotic technology to detect a simulated biological contaminant in the center's mailroom. The exercise evaluated current emergency procedures and reactions by local emergency responders. We just performed our control. It's already changing colors to purple, indicating a valid test, confirming the not likely to contain biological material for you. This exercise was a tremendous success for us, not only did it give us the opportunity to test that robotic capability and, and prove its value uh, to our emergency response capabilities, but it also gave us an opportunity to partner with our local uh, response organizations and work together as a team. The joint exercise was conducted by multiple agencies, including OSHA, the U.S. Postal Service, local fire departments, and Glenn safety personnel. The STS-134 crew traveled to the Stennis Space Center on June 11th for a pre-flight visit with employees. STS-134 is the last scheduled mission of the Space Shuttle program. Thanks for all your hard work. <laughs> While at the center, Commander Mark Kelly, Pilot Greg Johnson, and Mission Specialists Greg Shamatov, Drew Foistel, Mike Fink, and European Space Agency Specialist Roberto Victori met with employees and toured the rocket engine test complex 
including the A2 test stand, where the last scheduled space shuttle main engine test was conducted in July of 2009. Five, six, seven, eight. A video program sponsored by NASA and the National Institute of Aerospace aimed at helping high school students learn about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, has won a regional Emmy Television Award. Welcome to NASA Launchpad. NASA Launchpad took home the statue in the informational instructional category for its episode, Bernoulli's Principle, at the 52nd Capital Region Emmy Awards held in Washington. Winning an Emmy was such an amazing honor for the two of us, especially at such a young age. But uh, Tom and I cannot take all the credit for this. We work with such an amazing team who supported us the entire way through. And we just wanted to thank NASA and NIA for giving us the opportunity to produce this show and for giving us the opportunity to help inspire the next generation of scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians. NASA Launchpad is targeted at high school students and features five to seven minute programs that apply STEM topics learned in the classroom to real world challenges. Teacher guides accompany the online educational program. To watch episodes of NASA Launchpad, log on to www.nasa.gov and consult NASA TV's education channel schedule, or click on For Educators on the website's main page and select Eclipse. Making robots, building lunar landers, and competing in a paper airplane contest was all part of the fun and educational activities at the Marshall Space Flight Center's annual Take Our Children to Work Day. I think it's good because if we stimulate interest, then we can create more scientists and engineers and be globally competitive. Well, I like the um, big, um, the extreme chill because um, they froze a bunch of objects using liquid nitrogen and it seemed pretty cool. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. Thank you. There you go. Children spent the day touring NASA facilities, visiting their parents' workspace, and checking out what they do each day at Marshall. Sometimes it's even fun for me to do some of this. It's been so long, so it's, it's neat to, you know, interact and work with the children. I've been here every year, and there's a lot of fun things to do, and it's just I love coming. The event was organized by Marshall's Office of Diversity and Equal Opportunity. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.